Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the Toshiba Tikra TE2100, also referenced as a Satellite Pro TE2100, but its official model is the Tikra TE2100. Uh, information on this model is actually really hard to come across. Um, they tend to support a wide variety of hard drive sizes and CPU speeds, um, but they all feature the Intel Pentium 4-M a really short-lived variant of its uh, desktop brother. Available in a range of speeds from the lowly 1.4 GHz all the way up to its fastest 2.66 GHz, uh, they were all released in the span of roughly a year from 2002 to 2003. This predates the Pentium 3 based Pentium M CPUs that followed quickly later as those provided much better performance and thermals. Uh, as 2003 rolled around Toshiba based all their models off that new Pentium M Centrino integration. So I picked this uh, unit up sporting the 1.8 GHz spec um, with 512 megs of RAM, 60 gig drive. Uh, and it comes with the NVIDIA GeForce 4 Go with a whopping 16 meg of video memory. Sadly mine has a, a bit of a problem related to the display, uh, most of the time it doesn't show anything on there, uh, but sometimes you get a faint garbled mess. So it is working, the machine is running, you can see it there, um, plug it into an external display, um, works fine, but yeah, something to do with the video card or display backlight or something. Um, yeah, causes an issue. Uh, you'll see here occasionally I get it to flicker. Overall the machine's in really nice shape for its age. The um, bottom casing is actually really nice too, apart from the rubber feet melting off, it's not all cracked and beat up. Around back you've got the usual uh, assortment of ports, uh, built a modem, T100 Intel Ethernet, really nice to have, as well as two USB ports, probably 1.0. Uh, right side of the machine is nothing there really, the front of the machine has the IR ports, audio jacks etc. Uh, left side of the machine has the DVD-ROM drive, the Wi-Fi switch, uh, PC card slot, and the um, RCA video out, really nice commodity item to have. Uh, keyboard featured is the classic Toshiba type, used in a huge amount of models a years to come, and features that terrible track point mouse nub. But yeah, overall this uh, machine's in really nice shape and um, fit for restoration. Uh, so with that, I found a second unit that's not as nice, um, and we're going to pull some bits out of it. Um, mainly the CD drive, CPU, some other random parts and things like that. Um, plus having a spare of this machine's um, really handy to have, so... Yeah, I'm not too sure what's wrong with my existing one, um, whether it's an LCD cable or an inverter issue or just a fried GPU, very possible given the generation of this uh, machine, but yeah, at least without some fancy test equipment, um, we're just going to try some uh, one by one parts swapping, good old classic parts cannon. Um, but yeah, I guess with that we'll start uh, stripping both of these machines down, getting some parts switched over and um, seeing what we can make work out of um, both of these machines.
Once getting that uh, top keyboard cover off, it's just a matter of removing two screws holding the keyboard in. Um, that's pretty easy to do, thankfully. And the little ribbon cable as well, that needs to come out. Um, Toshiba actually made these laptops pretty easy to service compared to some of the others I've worked on. Uh, Sony, uh, maybe even some Apple ones, but um, yeah. It's just all screws, they're all marked, the sizes are all pretty much marked and things like that, so yeah, nice and easy to work on. Next we're just going to tackle the fragile LCD parts, so that can be a little bit tricky. Um, underneath the keyboard um, and speaker covers are some extra screws that hold the display down. And we just need to pop up the LCD uh, cable. It can be a little bit tricky because it's connected to that flexible um, base cable underneath. It's a really terrible design. I don't know why they use that, but gentle prying either side of the cable will pop that out nice and easily and evenly. That's what we want. And um, then there is just some more screws hiding underneath the speakers and one more for the top case. So you have to remove the LCD to get the top case fully off the machine. Alright, now we're looking at the parts of the machine, there's the GPU, here is its flexible uh, ribbon cable for the LCD screen, uh, CPU of course sitting over there, um, it's all socketed so it can be swapped, um, and the LCD cable um, there just connects to that ribbon cable here, it's a bit of a terrible design in my opinion, it can you know move about and get damaged a bit. Um, but yeah, now we just got to strip down the uh, donor unit and start robbing parts out of it. So we'll, won't show the whole thing, but same sort of process really. And someone decided to mark up the uh, hard drive for some random information. So this ran Windows Vista and boy was it slow. Both machines are disassembled now. We can start switching some parts over to see what the problem is. Uh, for me, I'm going straight for the GPU. It's normally the logical choice on these old machines, uh, either that or an LCD itself, but uh, it's really easy. You just need to remove the ribbon cable and two screws, and um, you can gently um, pop out the um, graphics card from the um, main, main board. It's just socketed in, basically. So. Yeah, not too sure if this is the actual problem, but I figured if we do um, part by part, then um, we'll narrow down what the actual problem is. So that's that's what I'm aiming for. And then um, once I actually fix the machine, I'm going to go for some fun parts like a CPU upgrade. Um, I'm going to keep the Wi-Fi card in this machine. It's actually a Cisco branded Wi-Fi card. So. Of course, this is before Wi-Fi was a standard, so, um, you know, standard option in each machine. Uh, so, yeah, it's got some odd, odd branded Cisco stuff in there instead of like an Intel or Broadcom or Atheros. Um, but anyway, as you can see, pretty easy to do when the machines this far apart. They, um, they really did make it easy and you can actually test the machine when it's this far disassembled as well so it makes actually trialing things actually really easy because you can just sort of plug it all in and then it'll just work a little bit of a gotcha is um, where the front LEDs are uh, at the front of the machine you'll see these black and red cables that's the power inverter board and it's kind of just sandwiched together so make sure that's um, firmly together when you power up the machine because I had a no power issue um, and it turns out they just sort of popped loose because it's all moving about. 
Uh, but yeah, looks like uh, we have a winner. It was a dead GPU. Now, the GPU also feeds power to the LCD, so it could also be like a, a power supply inverter supply issue, I'm guessing, for maybe the backlight. But I mean, given there's hardly any cooling on this thing, it's probably just cooked. So with all of that sorted, we're going to just crack on and just sort of uh, replace a few more parts. I want to steal the nicer ribbon cable off the donor unit. Uh, CPU and um, we'll steal the DVD writer as well. Um, so yeah, we'll carry on and put the machine back together with some nice upgrades. Once again, before going too far, we're just going to do a quick power on test to make sure the machine actually works. And uh, thankfully it does, you can't see it on that angle, but um, with that all working and posting basically, we're going to just throw this thing back together and um, carry on uh, with some testing. Um, helpful thing to do, which I should have mentioned earlier, is to mark the... Um, and the cables for the Wi-Fi card. I don't think it's fully necessary, but if you want to know where to put them back, um, I just put a line on the, the cables there so I know which one goes where. With the machine back together as one again, thankfully it still works, uh, boots into a really bloated install of uh, Windows XP, so um, I figured what we'll do is look uh, for some new drivers and do a rebuild. 
And while I was uh, looking for things, um, the neighbour's cat, Mr. Boots, decided to come in and uh, he stole my chair. He does that when I'm away at work. Bastard. Uh, anyway, um, while I was online, on the line, uh, looking for drivers, I noticed there's actually native drivers for Windows 98. So the machine was in use and, you know, manufactured around 2002, so backwards compatibility makes sense, but I didn't think it would go quite back that far. But it does use an Intel 845 chipset, so I can see why it's still here. But yeah, I figured, why not download them, give it a try, and let's just see how well it works. And um, normally when you do a 9X install on a bit more modern hardware than it's actually intended to run on, it normally gives you a few problems. But to be honest, I was actually really surprised that the install process went flawlessly, actually. It didn't give me a single issue, um, which is really weird. Because normally there's something, with whether or not it's a driver or something like that. But um, yeah, breaking out the IDE adapter um, to copy drivers and things over. Um, we've got even hotkey support, which is awesome because, you know, it's just one of those nice little extra things to have and control brightness, things like that. All the horrible power management stuff is here from Windows XP. Um, to my surprise, it's all here and running and supported, so... <laughs> Maybe these drivers might be useful for other Toshiba models. Um, device manager showing all the devices installed. Of course, that stupid internet connection sharing thing. But um, yeah, they're all here and working a treat, which is fantastic because I didn't know if it would actually all work. Uh, software upgrades. This is something I have only seen on older models. Um, seems to be an obsolete sort of driver updater thing. Uh, of course, it doesn't work anymore. The servers are off or moved uh, but I do have networking support enabled on this but the uh, Intel Ethernet driver does affect the boot up time it's a bit weird it's like it's trying to pull an IP address but anyway we've got the full 2 gigahertz the 512 megs RAM the whopping 16 megabyte video card and to my surprise a Yamaha sound chip more on that later so we're going to crack straight into some games because I just want to see what this thing can do. And that's really where it boils down for me is I want to know, does the 16 megabyte GeForce go uh, with its uh, dedicated VRAM um, actually perform? So let's uh, run some games and let's see what happens, eh? Mix. Orb. Ah. Apart from me being shit at Quake 3, um, it works really, really well. 60 FPS at uh, 1024 by 768. So I went straight for the big dog. I went for GTA 3. Now these games do require actually a pretty, you know, up there spec wise machine. Some of my um, desktops with a better GPU, but, you know, lesser CPU really struggle with this. Um, so it's a, I find it a really good test. Now we are limited to 640 pretty much by 480 um, because of the, I'm guessing the video RAM limit. Being 16 megabytes it's um, probably can't drive anything higher than that. 
I know a place on the edge of the red light district where we can lay low. But my hands are all messed up, so you better drive, brother. We need a bigger SUV. This is the place right here. Let's get off the street and find a change of clothes. The Maibatsu monstrosity. I know this guy. He's connected. He makes the music. Me and him go back so I can probably get you some work. Come on, let's head over there. With the time I save taking shortcuts through the strip mall parking lot, I can focus on the important things. Like gazing longingly at the pool boy or buying more exercise equipment off the TV. So what if it gets three miles to the gallon? I'm a mom, not a conservationist. The new my Batsu monstrosity. Mine is bigger. You know what? I'm actually really surprised that works as well as it does. Um, so, you know what, I'm going to double down on this one and we're going to go straight for Vice City. And this game needs 32 megs of dedicated VRAM, so uh, we're going to just see what this one can do. So screwed, These gorillas, listen to me, are going to come down here and rip my head off. It's re ridiculous. I did not go to law school for this. Okay, now what the hell are we going to do? Shut up, sit down, relax. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Stands to reason. No, no, no. Freedom. The car for hot excitement. You'll be working for my father? Maybe. You mind me resting my hand in your lap? Maybe. So difficult having a rich and powerful father. Vamos. Uh, you know what, I'm actually really blown away with the performance of this NVIDIA um, graphics card. I mean, even though it doesn't have lots of VRAM, it actually performs really well. I mean, sure, the resolutions aren't super high, but um, you know what, it does the job. And it must be also paired with that 2 gigahertz CPU, um, just really helps buffer the physics. So, you know what, we're going to play another game which sure isn't gra is graphically demanding, but... Still, you need to have good frame rates to play it right, so... Of course, one of my favourites, uh, we're gonna do some blue shift.
Okay, so yeah, I do some shameful save scumming. That's just because I'm uh, not very good at those games, but uh, and you'll see that coming up in this one too. But Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. Uh, this one is not so much uh, challenging um, on graphics-wise. It's just more compatibility. Um, so half of the machines I've got don't actually run this game. Um, you can get some patches actually, which help um, compatibility a great deal. Um, but yeah, graphics wise, I'm going to keep this one in a nice middle ground of 800 by 600 at 16 bit color. Um, seems to fit alright onto the LCD of the machine. Of course, I'm blowing up to 4K here, it looks terrible, but um, yeah, it runs a treat and um, no excuses for my terrible driving skills. Three, two, one, go!
Yeah, I really did screw myself over by running into that wall. Uh, I'm not very good at this game, but still a lot of fun actually. It's one of my favorite Need for Speeds, but yeah. Moving on to some DOS games, I thought I'd just go straight for Commander Keen to test sound and display compatibility. So of course it's got the horrible display issue with the juddering. That can be fixed by downloading a version 1 of this game, um, like a really early release, and then um, running a patch over the top of it. Um, that does work, but it's hard to find. Um, Sound Blaster, it may be doable. I ran out of time, but it did list it as an option, but no sounds came out of it. So maybe with some tweaking, you can actually get it to do it. Um, but yeah, to be honest, um, I was actually more surprised by the next game. I managed to get full MIDI um, and sounds out of the Sound Blaster um, sound emulation. Um, so I wasn't expecting that because laptops I've got that are older than this um, struggle with it. That's right, we've got full Duke 3D support here. Uh, that is pretty awesome for a laptop this modern supporting those sounds. Um, as I said, there is probably some room to tweak and change things, but hey, you know, it works in Windows 98, so yeah. And now there is a little bit of odd lines you'll see coming across to the display. That is actually the resolution mode I've got it set as. Uh, find if you use just the normal a display mode that is default, I think it was that first option, um, it gets rid of those lines and it happens with blood as well which you'll see next, um, but hey it, it works and if you're willing to lower the resolution um, you can get rid of those lines as well so um, not too bad and of course it's not natively compatible but you know it actually does a pretty good job. So I'm using the uh, Windows installer for Blood, and this is actually a really good, good game if you guys haven't played it actually. It's built on the build engine of course. Um, same sort of lines, I have this with my desktop as well that has an NVIDIA GeForce 3 200 Ti I think it is. Um, so you can once again get rid of those lines by lowering the resolution to the, the default VGA mode. Um, but you know, I, I kind of ignore the lines after a while, so 
it's not so much of an issue for me. Um, they are there, they are annoying, but after a bit of time, you kind of just ignore them. Um, so I just left it like that. But yeah, once again, full sound support, and um, yeah, I'm surprised that Duke worked at all. Um, so it might be some more room for some actual DOS gaming on this thing. Always going to go for the dual flare guns there, but uh, yeah. Oh well, it wraps this one up, of course, as the end is coming near. But I'm really, really surprised by this machine. Um, with its 16 megabyte video card, <laughs> I was not expecting it to be able to do any gaming, especially Vice City. That game is demanding. Uh, also, the fact that the Sound Blaster compatibility worked at all with DOS games. Uh, I was That was the one thing I was really surprised about, is any of that actually worked. Um, you know what? Awesome machine. If you guys um, find one online, I'd definitely pick it up. If you want something in between 9x gaming and XP gaming, it does seem to form a bit of a bridge. But like other than that, that's all for this one. So thanks for watching, and catch you guys soon.